1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's Talk Radio. This is your turn. A live call in show featuring spirited discussion and debate about issues that matter to the community. Stay with us to hear what Northwest Florida thinks. Better yet, call in at 623 1330 and tell us what you think. It's your turn here on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's Talk Radio. Now, here's the host of Your Turn. You have now entered the Oval Office of Talk Radio for the Gulf Coast with Carl Gallops and Freedom Friday. Carl doesn't need a teleprompter. He actually knows the difference between right and wrong and the difference between common sense and political correctness. He is on a first name basis with God. What a refreshing place to be. Now, here's Carl Gallops. All right, hello America. So glad you're with us. We're broadcasting live. This is Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. And of course, we have the world famous Mallory Bardwell as our producer, named in the nation's top producers on toptalkradio.com. You can go there and find that out and see her picture and, and see who she is. And uh, she's quite famous to us and around the nation as well. And we love her. And uh, if you want to call up and talk to Mallory and get on the show, 623 1330 is the phone number, area code 850-623-1330. As a matter of fact, for the first uh, half of the first hour of our two-hour show this afternoon, uh, we're going to open up the phone lines and uh, talk with me. Uh, let me know how you feel about something. I mean, you know, I was just uh, just looking at the headlines of Drudge. Uh, just saw this a moment ago. Uh, Abba Dimajab. Israel will soon be destroyed. Right underneath that it says, Iran says, Israel's existence is, quote, an insult to all of humanity. Well, you know, folks, we've talked about that a lot here on Freedom Friday. And back when the Arab Spring was first taking place, you'll remember if you were listening to Freedom Friday, I told you on the day, it, it started happening on a Friday, uh, the attacks in Egypt and the and the civil unrest and uh, the fall of Egypt. It happened on a Friday live while we were on the air. And I told you way back then, over a year ago, that uh, the Muslim Brotherhood was going to rise. Uh, it, they were going to take over Egypt, the 11th largest standing army in the world, uh, and that they were going to start laughing lashing out against Israel. And not only have they done that, but now they are aligning themselves with Iran. And of course, you know Iran's agenda. And I just read the headlines to you. Mahmoud, I'm in a bad job. Mahmoud, I'm in a bad job. He declares, headlines of drudge, Israel will soon be destroyed. Well, I've got n news for Mahmoud, I'm in a bad job. I come from a biblical worldview. I happen to believe the Bible is the infallible and final word of the living God. And if I interpret it correctly. Uh, sorry, Mahmoud, but Israel will not be destroyed ever again. Uh, and, you know, and now, now she will be attacked if I understand the prophecies of Ezekiel 38 and 39 correctly, and she will appear to be almost devastated. Uh, the Lord will intervene miraculously, and the nations that align themselves to attack her will be in ruin. As a matter of fact, that 2,600-year-old prophecy named the nations that will align themselves in the, quote, last days when Israel is, quote, back in the land. And of course, you know, 2,500 years, there was no Israel. And we saw Israel come back to the land in 1948. But the, the nations are named. Uh, they're just not named with modern names, but the old tribal uh, table of nations names of Genesis 10, they're named. And uh, there are alliances uh, that are spoken of, uh, never before seen in the history of the world. Uh, and the alliances are made for the purpose of attacking Israel. Israel. Well, who are those nations? Well, get this, Russia and Iran, they're named, you know, the tribal table of nations. It's in Ezekiel 38, 2,500 year old scripture. Russia and Iran will align themselves along with Turkey and Syria and Lebanon and Egypt and Libya and the Sudan and Saudi Arabia. And I, I mean, does any of that sound familiar to you? It's, it's like reading the front page of today's newspaper or, 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 or the internet news. And that's what's happening. And so right now the headlines, uh, Mahmoud, I'm in a bad job. Israel will soon be destroyed. Well, I don't think, of course, Israel is going to allow that to happen. Well, God's not going to allow it to happen, but uh, just, just humanly speaking, geopolitically speaking, Israel's not going to allow it to happen. 
And uh, so anyway, folks, I'm telling you, we are living in prophetic times. We're living in biblical times. If, if you don't know the Lord, <laughs> we're living in scary times for you. If you know the Lord, then you understand uh, that these things must happen and will happen and that we have a lot of opportunity to, to reach people's hearts. Uh, but in the meantime, now we're looking at America's upcoming presidential election. Here's what I, hey, call up and talk to me about this. Tell me, tell me what do you think? What, what, what is a Christian to do? What's a Christian to do? I'll give you my answer in a little bit if you'd like. Uh, but, but here's the bottom line. Barring some weird or out of the ordinary circumstance. I mean, you know, anybody can have a heart attack, for example. And I pray to the Lord that no one does. You know, I, I don't want Romney or Ryan or Obama or Biden. I, don't, I wish no physical ill upon any of them. But, I mean, that's not out of the question. I mean, people are killed in car accidents and have heart attacks and those kinds of things all the time. But barring anything weird or out of the ordinary, it appears it's going to be Romney Ryan versus Obama Biden. Now, there's been a little question over the last few days whether Biden would be his pick for VP. And, and uh, some of the headlines has indicated that he actually uh, uh, courted Hillary Clinton for the spot, but she declined. And, uh, and I heard the press secretary the other day say, uh, <laughs> just because the press secretary says it, they're, they're known to lie, and particularly Obama's administration. But, but he declared, you know, without equivocation, that Biden would be uh, the VP. So, so here we have it. Romney Ryan, Obama Biden. Now, it's interesting because the Christian looks at this and sees Romney Mormon. Okay, that's, that's interesting because, you know, does Romney really believe he's going to be the god of his own planet one day, as the Mormon faith teaches? Uh, he's described as a very, very deeply uh, ingrained Mormon. And then Ryan, his running mate, uh, Roman Catholic. Okay. Now, you know, the Roman Catholics have a quite a heritage and history in the United States, and uh, and uh, you know, a lot of evangelical Christians have a problem with Roman Catholicism, but uh, there are a lot of Catholics, and, and there are a lot of Christians that don't have a big problem with that. But I'm, I'm just I'm just stating the facts here. So we've got a Mormon Roman Catholic ticket, and then Obama, who's really really what he is is a, is is a pure D egocentrical, narcissistic, secularist. That's what he is. He leans, if he's got any religiosity in him at all, he leans towards Islam because of his upbringing. And, and you know, Indonesia and the Muslim schools and Muslim fathers, uh, you know, et cetera. Uh, you know, he can quote from the Koran and, and, and does quite often, as a matter of fact, has the Ramadan dinners in the, in the White House and uh, celebrates Ramadan. I mean, you know, I don't think he gets down on a prayer rug and prays to Mecca three times a day and reads the Koran five times a day to his children. I don't know that he's that kind of a Muslim, but if he religiously, let's just let's call him a Muslim. All right. Just just for religious preference sake. And then, of course, his running mate, Biden, I, I believe, and you can correct me on this, I, I'm just, this just coming off the top of my head, I, I did, as you can probably tell. But I, I think Biden is a Roman Catholic. So, so we've got Mormon Catholic, Muslim Catholic. Okay, now, now, what is the Christian to do approaching the presidential election? Now, now this is a, I mean this. If you want to call in and weigh in, give me your opinion, uh, please do. 623-1330, area code 850. If you're calling from outside the area code area, let Mallory know that. Or if you're a first-time caller, uh, we'll bump you right up to the front. And, and listen, this is not a trick question. I'm not going to jump in your kit. I'm not going to jump, jump down your throat. Uh, I, I, you know, I've struggled with all of this all along. I've been pretty transparent about that. But uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm very close to reaching a decision on it, but uh, do, you, do you think a Christian ought to uh, get involved in this presidential election? And if so, how? And uh, how are you leaning towards your vote? Um, how about this? You, you don't even have to call yourself a Christian. H how about if you're more of a traditionalist American? And, and what I mean by that is when you look at these two tickets, Romney Ryan, Obama Biden, politically speaking, what we have is constitutional republic candidates you know, by and large, Romney Ryan, versus progressive. And, and you can add to that, you know, socialist, uh, communist, Marxist. And, the, the, you know, I'm not using those words as pejoratives necessarily. The, those are just philosophies. Those are political philosophies. And Obama certainly, certainly leans more towards the socialist, communist, Marxist type of political philosophy. I mean, that, that's apparent. That's obvious. I don't see how anyone could, could argue that. Then he does a flat up and down constitutional republic, uh, you know, capitalistic 
society. But but Romney Ryan, I mean, they're capitalistic, uh, constitutional republic, and and the Romney Ryan ticket does underpin more of the Judeo-Christian foundation. Now, I know evangelical Christians, and I am one, you know, we would not consider the Mormon faith to be evangelical Christianity. But just set that aside for a moment, and let's just say that Romney Ryan ticket will, I do believe, give credence to and honor the Judeo-Christian foundation of America uh, much more than Obama Biden and, and Obama Biden they they've already proven you know where they stand I mean you know pro abortion all the way pro gay marriage pro gay celebration in the military not going to uh support uh, uh, the federal law DOMA defense of marriage act I mean you know so we 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 see the juxtaposition here so really what we have is an election for a constitutional republic, capitalist economic system, if you will, versus a progressive, socialist, Marxist, communist. And the reason I add all, say all three of those is because uh, you know, the progressive movement kind of borrows from all of those. You know, it's kind of hard to pin Obama to the wall. Uh, various uh, commentators and, and, and political pundits and, 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 and uh, uh, experts uh, have varying uh, definitions of who Obama really is, politically speaking, what his philosophy is. But, but let's just call it progressive versus constitutional republic. So, right. so you know, what are you going to do? Why do you think we're in the shape we're in right now? You know, why, why, why is it that the Black Panthers can get in the media and through their leadership, and this has happened in the last couple of days, most of you know this, but, but, but out on the radio and television airwaves call for the death, call for blacks to break into the homes of whites, drag them into the street, skin them alive, burn them, kill their babies, crush their heads in. I mean, this, you know, and, and, and CNN waits four hours to report the story, and, and then when they do, they start making excuses. The shooting at the Family Research Council, again, CNN, waited three to four hours before they even reported the shooting, and then they started defending the shooter. I mean, you know, not flat out, but they said, well, you know, we, we don't know if this is a politically motivated. We don't know if this is, this is not a hate crime. We don't think this is an act of terrorism. What do you mean? The guy walks into the Family Research Council and says, I don't like your politics, and starts opening fire. But that's not politically motivated? Yeah, yeah because see, the guy's a leftist. <laughs> He's a pro-homosexual guy, see, the guy that went crazy, the guy that did the killing. So, you know, we got to defend him. So how, how did we get to where we are in our culture? That's what I'm asking. I mean, can you imagine if I got on the radio and said, hey, I want all the whites that are listening to me start breaking into uh, black folks' homes, start killing their babies and dragging them. In the but, you know, that's, that's horrendous. To even say those words as an illustration, I feel dirty just saying it. What if I meant it? What if I said that over the air and meant it and, and, and just ranted and raved and called for that to happen? What, what do you think might happen to me before the day's over? think FCC would be all over? You think federal uh, law enforcement might be uh, investigating me? What, what, what do you think? What, why is it okay for the Black Panthers to do it? And it's okay, apparently. FBI, they're, they're not doing a thing. So we've got the Romney Ryan ticket, the Obama Biden ticket. What is a Christian to do? You know, it's interesting. I, I, I know we have many, many listeners, but the phone lines are silent on this. And that's really not surprising to me. Again, I'm not asking, this is not, I'm not going to set you up. This is not a trick, okay? I, I'm really anxious and, uh, to know what you think about this. I'm anxious to hear your opinions. And uh, if you'd like to know what I think I'm going to do as a voter and as a Christian and as a pastor, I'll be glad to tell you, but somebody's got to call and ask me. <laughs> That's the way we're going to do it. 850-623-1330. We're going to take a brief time out. When we come back, we'll go to our phone lines as people are calling in. Uh, Mallory will handle all that for me. In the meantime, I want you to listen to these messages. These are the people that keep us on the air. Listen to them, do some business with them, and tell them that you appreciate what you hear on WEBY. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallus. We'll be right back. We'll take your phone calls. <laughs> 